Before we discuss what force, mass, and acceleration are individually, we should first discuss what they are as a whole. While he didn't invent forces nearly 400 years ago, Sir Isaac Newton contributed significantly to science in three, three areas, force, mass, and acceleration. He discovered that they are all interconnected in a very, very simple way. He explained it with these three laws. Law number one. Objects in motion tend to stay in motion unless acted upon by an outside force. This means that things that move will keep moving until something, anything, changes the motion in some way. Pretty simple. Imagine driving in a windstorm or a blizzard. The effect of wind on your motion makes steering very difficult. The second law is an applied force on an object equals the rate of change of its momentum with time, which in simple English means that the force equals mass times acceleration, the equation we use to define force today. If you change one value of the triangle, the result changes. The final law states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. This is very simple too. If you throw a rock, for example, you push on the rock, and the rock pushes back. When the rock lands, it pushes on the ground, making a crater, and the ground pushes back, stopping the rock. It is when forces interact that interesting things start to happen. A force, classically, is defined as an exchange of energy, a push or pull, for example, between objects. The force of an asteroid impact, for example, or the influence of wind on a sail. Force is measured in newtons, which is defined as a kilogram of mass moving at one meter per second squared. Force can be used in many different ways, but in the world of math and science, its base unit is always a newton. Now mass is not weight. Mass is the amount of matter contained within an object, measured in kilograms. And the mass never changes, no matter the influence of gravity. It just so happens that the mass of an object and its weight happen to be identical on Earth. On the Moon, for example, gravity is 16.67% Earth's gravity, or approximately one-sixth. On the Moon, my mass remains 70 kilograms, like it is on Earth, or in orbit, or anywhere else. But my weight is no longer 70 kilograms. It's only about 11.6 kilograms. On a bathroom scale, taken from Earth and deposited on the Moon, it would only register 11.6 kilograms, or about 26 pounds. 11.6 kilograms of Moon weight, then, is the effect of its gravity on my mass, on the 70 kilograms of stuff that I'm made of. Finally, the force, known as acceleration, is often seen as meters per second squared, which we all know by the pressure of the seat pushing into us and vice versa, when you floor the gas. Not just speeding up, it is also defined as the velocity as it changes over time. Now, velocity is speed and a direction unit, a vector, which in our case of accelerating cars is the speed going up while you go forward. If you are accelerating or are on a turn, you move into the car door or away from the car door. That's your acceleration changing. If speed remains a constant, but direction changes, like a bucket at the end of your spinning arm, speed remains a constant and direction changes. This is still acceleration, just not in the way we all thought about as children, but that's why the water stays in the bucket, even when the bucket is upside down. Just to recap, in case I lost you, force and weight are both measured in newtons. That is because weight is the force of the Earth pulling you down. This is why you don't fly off. Acceleration is measured in speed over time squared, meters per second squared, for example. And mass is measured in kilograms. All these are in SI units. Now, while this may seem like a lot of information, and it truly is, simply put, all you need to the understanding 
is that the force of something hitting something else has two parts, how heavy it is and how fast it's moving. If you change the acceleration, you change the force. If you change the mass, you change the force. Basic algebra can do the rest. Understanding this simple truth is the objective lesson for this day, and it is the foundation of a great deal of applied math and physics. Now, the force of gravity upon a human being is a product of its force and the acceleration due to gravity. For example, 70 kilograms and 9.8 meters per second squared, which is the force of gravity on Earth. Now, for an exercise, find your approximate weight to the nearest 25 pounds, roughly 11 kilograms, on this table, and record your weight on each planet in our solar system. Yes, even Pluto.